Welcome to this second video on capacitors. Now in the last video we learned all about what capacitors were, they're two plates, what they look like in a diagram, these two lines of the same length right next to each other. We learned the formula for capacitance, that they hold a lot of charge in what that formula is here, and that they hold a lot of energy in the energy formula here. In this video, we're gonna look at what happens when you put multiple capacitors together. So for example, in series, like we've got two capacitors here, or capacitors in parallel, what happens then? And also with some of the graphs and calculations we can do when capacitors are charging and when they're discharging. So starting off with capacitors in series, you need to know that the capacitance overall becomes lower, it decreases. And the reason is that basically what you've done is you've taken two plates which are quite close together, and you've made two plates which are a big distance apart because as far as the wires are concerned, you've got one very outside plate here and it goes around to the battery which pushes charges around onto this other plate around here on the left. And in between, you've just got a bad dielectric effectively. Yeah, you know, it might get a little bit polarized, but it doesn't do much. Now you're not gonna need to explain any of this, but it just goes to show that two in series make a lower capacitance. You can calculate this with the formula, one divided by the total capacitance is gonna equal one divided by capacitor one, plus one divided by the capacitance of capacitor two. So for example, if we had these two capacitors here, we might have one with a capacitance of 1.5 times 10 to the minus six farads, the other with two times 10 to the minus six farads. So we wanna calculate the total capacitance. What we can do is we plug in our capacitance one and our capacitance two into the formula, one divided by capacitance one and one divided by capacitance two. We put that into our calculator, you're gonna get an answer of 1,166,666.7. Now this seems like a massive capacitance and not quite right because our capacitance is meant to be lower overall. Now the reason is you've calculated one divided by the total capacitance. If you wanna find out the total capacitance, you need to then do one divided by your answer to get C total. So you now go one divided by 1.166666 million, then you're gonna get your answer of 1.57 times 10 to the minus seven farads. Now you'll notice that this is 10 times smaller almost than what our original smallest capacitor was. So it really does decrease the capacitance quite a lot. Whereas if we have capacitors in parallel, it increases the overall capacitance. You can add the two capacitances together. The total is just capacitance one plus capacitance two and you can add as many as there are in parallel. And the reason for this is that you've basically just increased the area of the capacitance. When you had capacitor one and you add in the second one, you've just added a whole lot more area for that same charge to sit on. So that's why we add them together. And if we had those same two capacitors in parallel with 1.5 times 10 to the minus six farads and two times 10 to the minus six farads, adding those into your formula and adding those two together gives you a total capacitance of 3.5 times 10 to the minus six farads. So that's how you add together capacitors in parallel. Now, last time we learned about capacitors charging. We learned what happened and that a battery up here might go through a resistor. Anyway, it puts a whole lot of charge on these plates, both of them positive and negative, and that builds up over time. So if we looked at that in a graph, the voltage on the capacitor would start building up really quickly. And the reason is that there's nothing opposing the charge to start with. So quite a lot of charge in this first little instant is gonna get pushed around and stored on the plate. What we're gonna do is break this charging up into time periods, which we call a time constant. We'll get to that in a moment. But after one time period, 63% of the charge is gonna go on, which is quite a lot. And that's because there's no repulsive force to start with, so it starts charging really quickly. But once you've got to this level, you've already got some positive charges building up on the positive plate and some negative charges building up on the negative plate. So now that's gonna repel and slow everything down and slow the charging down. So what happens after another time period or another time constant, you build up a little bit more charge. And while after the first time constant, we've got to 63% of the way there, we get another 63% of what's remaining, which means we get to 87% in total. Then it gets even harder to push charge on, so it goes slower. So you go to 63% of what's remaining after a third time period or a third time constant, so it gets you to 95% in total. Then a little bit more charge goes on, getting you to 98%, then a little bit more charge goes on, and it gets you to almost 100% or 99% there after five time constants. So what happens is you'll notice that you start charging really quickly, you get to a 63% change after one of these time constants, but then you get to 63% of what's left, and then 63% of what's left, and then 63% of what's left, so it gets slower and slower and slower. 
and that's due to the building up repulsive voltage of this capacitor here, repelling what the battery is trying to push on. So, things to take home is that you're going to get this balanced 12 volts of repulsive force, which directly opposes the 12 volts of pushing voltage from the battery, and that's going to be basically up to 12 volts of charge after 5 of these time constants, or 5 of these time periods. Now, every single time period that we've listed here is going to be exactly the same, and you'll notice that the 63% number is really important. So one time constant, one time period, is a 63% change. When we had 100% of the way to go, a 63% change takes us to 63% of the way. Now we only had 37% left to go. Now 63% of that gets us up to 87% and so on and so on. You need to remember the 63% number and that one time constant equals a 63% change. Now, we can calculate exactly what this time constant is, or this time period is. It's called time constant. It's the resistance of the circuit multiplied by the capacitance of the capacitor. So this is the formula you'll need. And you can note that once we've got to five time periods, we count that as being charged. It's not quite at 100%, but it's pretty blooming close. So five time periods counts as being fully charged. Now with discharging, if we took out the battery for example, so now all this charge was free to discharge straight off and the negatives would go around to the positive plate and the positives would go around to the negative plates, we get the same thing happening. Although we're starting at 12 volts rather than starting at zero volts and we're going to slowly go down and down and down until we discharge and get to zero volts. So we flip the same graph upside down. We start off at 12, we start to discharge really, really quickly because you've got a very high repulsive voltage up here on the capacitor. It goes down and after one time constant, you have a 63% change again. And then another 63% of what's left, and then another 63% of what's left every single time constant. And the formula is exactly the same. So charging and discharging are just the opposites of each other. And we're starting with this really high repulsive force because you've got lots of charge all crammed together. Then a lot of those charges will leave straight off the bat then some a few more will leave, then a few more and a few more, and it gets slower and slower and slower over time. Now, rather than doing a 63% change, we can just know that whatever's left is 37%, because that's what's remaining after we take away 63%. And then rather than saying, in total, we have an 87% left after two time constants, we could say there's 13%. So on this discharging graph, even though we still have that 63% change, it's just easier to learn it from zero that 37% is left or 13% is left. Now the key number is that 37 or that 63% change though. And still, five time constants means it's fully discharged. So we might do some kind of problem like this where we have a resistor of 200 ohms and a capacitor that's fully charged up at 12 volts, which has a capacitance of 9.24 times 10 to the minus three farads. And we can work out how long it takes the capacitor to discharge. So the way we do that is with our time constant formula. So in order to find the time constant, we have to multiply the resistance of the circuit by the capacitance. So if we write out our formula, we've got R, which is 200 ohms, multiplied by the capacitance, which is the 9.24 times 10 to the minus 3 farads. Multiplying those gives us one time constant of 1.848 seconds. That's one time constant. But we're not quite there yet. It says how long does it take the capacitor to discharge, which means discharging fully, not 37%. So to answer the question, we need to know it's five time constants to fully discharge. So we multiply one time constant that we found by five. And that gives us a discharge time of 9.24 seconds. So this is what you need to know for charging and discharging capacitors. The key term is this word time constant here. And you need to remember the 63% change or that 37% is remaining and the shape of this graph. It's called an exponential decay graph, which just starts really steep and gets less and less steep over time, whether it's discharging or charging. So what you need to know, in series, the capacitance lowers overall. And that's because basically you've had a bigger separation between the plates and you put a bad dielectric in the middle. You can calculate that with this formula. One over the total capacitance equals one over capacitance one plus one over capacitance two plus however many capacitors you've got in series. Whereas if we look at parallel, you get an increased capacitance overall and you just add the capacitors together. Capacitance one plus capacitance two plus capacitance three, however many there are, equals the total capacitance. We also learnt about the time constant. When a capacitor is charging or discharging, it's broken up into these time periods called a time constant, which has the symbol tor. 
Now these time constants are the time it takes to get a 63% change. So a 63% change from where we were before. And after five time constants, you're fully charged. Or when we're talking discharging, you're fully discharged at this point here. And you may need to draw or use these graphs as you go along. So let's try some questions now. Here we've got a graph which shows the relationship between the voltage and the time as a capacitor charges. Now we need to sketch another curve on this graph to show the effect of an increased resistance on the charging of this capacitor. So when we talk time of a charging capacitor, we know a formula that the time constant equals the resistance times capacitance. Now they've said in the question that we have an increased resistance here, which means given the capacitance stays the same, it's just the same capacitor, we're going to have an increased time constant or an increased time to charge. So therefore we draw the exact same shape of the graph, but we have it charging up slower. So it starts off a little bit slower and a bit slower and a bit slower. So it just takes longer to charge because you have a higher time constant or a longer time period to do that. So that's the first question. In the next question, we can look at a circuit. Here in the circuit, we've got a battery here with an internal resistance. We've got a bulb with a fixed resistance of 128 ohms. Now it says that switch one is closed so that the capacitor can charge up. Now we can ignore the bulb because switch two is still open. We need to explain why the charging is almost instantaneous of this capacitor here. Now when we're talking instantaneous, that's a time. So in order to do that, you want to bring out your time constant formula. And time constant equals R times C. So you can explain that because the resistance is quite small, 1.8 ohms, and the capacitance is small, it's times 10 to the minus 6. That means that the time constant is going to be very small as well. And that's shown by this formula, Tor equals RC. Now that gets you an achieve just to explain that the time constant is going to be small because R and C are small. But to get up to a merit, you'll need to explain that it's the time to charge is five time constants. And so if one time constant is small, five time constants are going to be small as well. That's a merit level answer. Look at the next question now. When this capacitor is fully charged, it holds 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs of charge. So if we open switch 1, so the battery is no longer relevant up the top here, and we close switch 2, then the capacitor is going to discharge through the lamp here. So on this graph, they want us to mark values and plot a curve with at least three points to show how the charge in the capacitor changes over this discharging process. Now we know it's going to start off really quickly discharging and then get slower and slower and slower over time. But let's figure out some exact numbers for this graph. So on the vertical axis, we've got charge. And when it's fully charged, it's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. That's what it said when it's fully charged. They give us that in the question. So we can label the rest of the axes where two-thirds of this is 1 times 10 to the minus 3, and one-third of that full charge number is 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So we know we start off fully charged, so that's one of our points, but what happens as we go down? We need to work out the time constant. So the time constant is given by the resistance times the capacitance, both of which they've told us in the question. So if we multiply this resistance of 128 of the lamp here, by the capacitance, the 125 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, we're going to get a time constant of 0.016 seconds, really short amount of time. So we can label on our graph one time constant here, which is 0.016 seconds. So we could put on two time constants, which is two times that, so 0.032 seconds, or three time constants, which is three times this, 0.048 seconds. All of these we can mark on the graph. And we know that after one time constant, there's a 63% change, or there's going to be 37% of this charge left over. So we can take this total charge, multiply that by 37%, or 0.37, and that's going to give us the charge after one time constant. So 37% times the full charge of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 gives us a charge left over of 0 0.555 times 10 to the minus 3. So now we look on our graph to 0 0.555 times 10 to the minus 3, which is just above this 0 0.5 line. So we go along there to the first time constant and mark on our graph. It's great. That's our first point. Now we know we're going to have another 30% drop when we get to the second time constant. So for the second time constant, we can do the same thing. We can have our original charge times by 37%. It's the first drop times by another 37% or times by 37% squared. And that's going to equal 0 0.205 times 10 to the minus 3. 
Now you could have taken your last one and multiplied that by 37%, you would have got the same answer. So now we need to mark this on for the second time constant. To 0 0.205 on the graph, we go two squares up and across to the second time constant and we mark on that here. We'll do one more because we've listed that on the graph, which is the same original charge multiplied by 0.37 or 37% times by 37% times by 37% or by 0.37 to the power of three. There's three of them now. So doing that, or multiplying your 0.208 times 10 to the minus three by 37% gives you the same answer. We're gonna get 0.076 times 10 to the minus three. So now we need to go right down to the very bottom of the graph at 0.076. Mark that one on there. So now we've been really good. We only need to mark three points, but we've done four. And we're going to draw a line that goes smoothly through all of these points back down towards zero. And you've got yourself a merit level graph here. It's great. Now for the final part of this question, it says that the lamp is going to glow at its normal brightness. So if the voltage is between nine volts and 12 volts, it's not going to do that if it's not. So on this graph, we need to estimate how long the lamp is going to glow at its normal brightness. So basically, how long is it before it goes from 12 and drops down to 9 volts? Now we know when it's fully charged, it's going to be 12 volts. There was a 12 volt battery in there. So we know there's that time. But now we need to figure out 9 volts because the lamp must be at 9 volts or above to shine at its normal brightness. So once we know the charge at 9 volts, we can figure out where that is on the graph. So to find charge, we use our charge formula. Charge equals capacitance times voltage. So we know the capacitance, it's 125 times 10 to the minus six. We multiply that by the voltage we wanna find, which is nine volts, and it's gonna give us a charge of 1.125 times 10 to the minus three. So now we can mark that on our graph at 1.125 times 10 to the minus three. We've got this line here, which is at nine volts. So the lamp is gonna be at its normal brightness right at the start until it carries on down and then drops below this nine volts. That's when our time ends. So we need to find this time here on the graph. Now, if you look closely and count the number of squares, we'll find that that time is three and a half squares out of the total 10 squares it takes us to get to this first time constant. So we multiply our time for one time constant, our 0.016 seconds, by three and a half squares out of 10 squares. We're gonna get a time of 0.0056 seconds. So it's only a very, very brief instant that the lamp will be at its normal brightness. And this is an excellence level calculation. So this is how we do calculations and graphs for capacitors that are charging or discharging.